In this video I will give you many powerful and useful tips that will instantly improve your sub-D modeling skills. Let's go! Now before we start with all the tips and uh, we're going to continue with the toot, I want to say that if you're new to Blender and uh, you know you don't know what the hell is going on, you want to learn the basics, we have a fantastic free course for you called Jumpstart Hard Service in Blender. The link is in the video description. We have over 80,000 students who joined the course, they absolutely love it and they're getting fantastic results. If you want to learn Blender in literally a few hours, this is the best option right now. It's going to give you a very good understanding of the core foundations of Blender, on the tools, the menus, you know, basics of hard surface modeling, tips on design, rendering, the whole package, all right? So like I said, it's free. The link is in the video description, so go ahead and get it. All right, guys, so in this video, I'm going to give you some practical tips that will really improve your sub the workflow and hopefully give you some really powerful tools to make things happen much faster and easier okay they're not gonna be in any specific order these are simply my it's my insight to sub the you know something i picked up with practice okay so first of all circles if you want to add a cir circle to a surface it's really easy all you need to do is you know when you subdivide the surface you just grab a vert and go to q and press circle with hard ups Move your mouse, scroll it up or down to adjust the number of segments, you're good to go. And if you want to, um, let's say, select verts for circle like this, you can go to Loop Tools add on. You just have to enable it in Blender. It's a free add on that comes with Blender. And you just uh, go to Circle and, you know, press S to scale it and Bob Jankle. Okay. This is all fine on a flat surface, but what if we're going to have a curved surface, right? Now, let me just um, decimate this really quick because it's a little bit too much geometry. So let me just uh, go to unsubdivide to and visual to mesh. Okay, that's much better. If I'm going to try to add a circle here to this surface, so I'm going to press Q and circle, you will see that we're going to have a problem because this circle now is actually flat, right? It doesn't really follow the surface curvature here. So what you want to do before you do anything, right, before you click off, because when you click off, you're done. But before you click off, right, you want to go to this menu and change to use new method, and this will conform the shape to the surface, okay? That's really important. Now, tip number two. You're going to be three tips in this one, okay? When you want to actually slide it like this, right, what you want to do is you want to enable surface slide in machine tools. And machine tools is a free add-on. You can get the paid version. And I have two massive videos that explain every single tool in the add-on. I'm going to be doing it now. But go to edit preferences and enable this. And you can enable surface slide in here. And this will allow you to move the circle freely. That will just, you know, glide on this curvature. But don't overdo it because if you go too far, gonna mess it up but if you want to you know notch things around a bit like this or scale it this is the much safer way of doing things okay so that's how you do it okay another trick i can show you here so let me just uh, insert this on y axis alt a to align it with machine tools and now i want to add you know let me just insert it one more time i want to add a securing loop here to secure this uh, this curvature here from the other side so you know add a loop here right if i'm going to press ctrl r you see that the loop doesn't really uh, follow either of these edges it's gonna in between but if you press e and then f you can actually flip it you see it's like a white uh, square here the square shows to which edge you're gonna be aligning that loop now so it's gonna be perfectly aligned to this kind of an angle and you can drop it in here and you will make sure that it's equidistant here on this side and on this side all around right it's the same size of a loop and that's really important for creating smooth uh, you know uh, bevels in situations like this right these are not really connected here so let me just do it properly because i created too many uh, too many but i got excited so let me just uh, do it one more time uh, there you go fewer verts and use current method and then we're going to reduce the number of us to eight because we need to have enough verts to connect them here to the uh, to these um, edges to create to these verts to create quads and uh, you don't want to add any more edges because um you will disturb the surface and you know this is perfectly fine so let's do it again insert it 
I extrude it, plus Y, Alt A to straighten out, right? G, Y, then insert it one more time, then Control R and press E and Control 3. And now if I'm going to go to to a mud cup, you'll see that you know the reflection is really clean, right? There's a bit of a wobble, but that's you know that's acceptable. Uh, um, you know, distortion this is really clean, okay. So there you go, that's how you create circles on curved surfaces. Next really powerful tip I can give you is for corners, okay? So when you, let's say we have a cut in here, right? Very simple subdivision, let's just apply this. And let's say we wanted to, you know, subdivide this, right? And before we subdivide this, you know, if you're gonna do it like that, it's gonna collapse on itself. We need to secure these edges, right? In order to do that, we're gonna select these edges. You can actually go to select similar and select sh by sharpness which we're going to select all the sharp edges we need, in this case all the edges are sharp edges and we're going to press ctrl b now when you're going to press ctrl b and scroll one more time to get this bevel um, on two sides of an edge there's a bit of an angle here you see that but when you press p you can actually change the bevel profile like this right so you can make it perfectly 90 degrees and then press A to readjust the size, okay, and click. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, you see these corners here, these triangles, this is bullshit, okay? You will have to fix all this manually. Fortunately, what you can do is go to bevel menu here, right? And you can change this miter outer from sharp to arc. And this will change how this corner is created. And you're going to get perfect uh, quad corners on these outer corners and perfect borrowed edge on the inner corner, which means they're gonna be nice and sharp here, okay? So all you need to do now, literally, is just create connections to all these points and you're done. And if I wanted to do a lazy subdivision on this one, I don't even have to connect all the edges. I can just connect these uh, four vats and I'm done. Okay, I can easily subdivide it and it's going to hold. All right. Another thing that you want to do when you're subdividing and you're working with hard ups, you see I used the boolean here. And um, if I'm going to go with control 2, you can see these nasty edges here on the corners. All right, this is caused by auto smooth. Hard ups is going to, and box cutter is going to automatically add auto smooth to your mesh. You want to go here and you want to turn this shit off, right? Because this will cause sharpening of angles here, of the edges, on the 90 degrees angle. So anything above 30 degrees is going to get sharpened. And subdivisions, it basically works against subdivisions. So you really don't want that. You want to turn that off, okay? Now in Blender 4.1, this is going to be in a different place, I think. But uh, in 4.0, it's in here. So just nuke this shit, right? Another really cool trick I can give you is that uh, when you have, for example, you're working with um, a bisect, so Control X, let's go to uh, bisect modifier and let's run a mirror. So whatever I do on this side is going to be reflected on this side. But what if I wanted, for example, inset this face to create, you know, um, a bevel, right? Or like an edge here around so let's say I wanted to insert this face. I'm gonna get something like this, right? I don't wanna insert this part. I wanna insert only this part, okay? Because when I mirror this, I want this face to be covering this area, right? So what you wanna do is wanna press I and B. B is going to actually stop this from inserting from the, from the middle, okay? And then when you're going to apply the mirror, right? So operations multiply, you're gonna get this, uh, you know, thing in the middle here. So you can, you can keep working on this in the, in the mirror form, right? So I can just extrude it, right? Insert it one more time and everything is fine. So that's my tip for insert. It's very powerful and you can use it in all kinds of situations when you do not want to insert the edge here on the, um, on the end of this insert, okay? Another really cool tip I can give you, and that's fucking irritating if you're not using it. When you are gonna add a cylinder to your to your scene and you're going to do anything to that cylinder, like at least, you know, rescale it or whatever, or move it, uh, this menu is gonna disappear. So you will no longer be able to adjust the number of segments, right? That is really annoying because sometimes when you match two pieces together, what you want to do 
is you want to make sure that the the edges are actually overlapping uh, because that's going to make it much more easy to connect two pieces through a boolean and then convert it to subdivision. You want to you want to make sure that the edges on the objects are matching, and also sometimes you want to readjust the count of verts on a cylinder. So the only way to do that will be to download a free add-on, which is on GitHub and it's called RePrimitive. Okay, and this add-on what's going to allow you to do. It's going to allow you after you transform the cylinder to wherever you want press ctrl alt a and you can actually change the number of of the edges of a cylinder now i would keep it in a in a multiplication of four so like 12 16 20 24 etc right that's a very good idea because it helps with creating quads later on okay so when i for example combine these here like that you will see that the reason behind it is very very clear right because now i'm gonna have quads everywhere okay so that's why you want to you know work um, with um, cylinders that have a multiplication of four edges and the same goes to corners so if i'm going to grab a cube and let's say I wanted to bevel this corner, I would highly recommend, oh, by the way, when you want to um, when you want to change this, because it's going to actually get stuck, this bevel in the 90 degrees angle, press P again, move your mouse, and then change here the shape um, of the bevel to 0 0.5, okay? And you're going to be fine, then Alt Z, and again. So, if you're going to be creating a bevel, make sure that you're going to have four um, or more, right? These uh, segments. So five verts or four segments. The reason again why is because let me show you. If I'm going to combine these together, it's extremely easy to create quads. Okay, you see that? I got two quads in here. And if I'm going to let's just mirror this everywhere. Select, select this, um, hold this section here and insert it. And have a really nice you know clean topology here okay on top so all the bevels should be 4 8 12 16 just like with a cylinder okay now another add-on i suggest you get is called edge slide okay it's a paid add-on it's like about 10 bucks but um it's just amazing and it's actually a direct tool import from cinema 4d and it's a very powerful tool okay now the edge slide what it does it actually slides any edge in or out okay so instead of running um, a bevel like this right so going with ctrl b what you can do is go to right click and slide edge and you can slide this edge in or out okay with your mouse this is really good guys so let's just you know drop it in here for example like this so it's kind of like an inset right but there are situations where you want to run a edge slide on something that isn't a loop and that's going to be problematic with an inset uh, because you just want to you know slide an edge on one side not on two sides and um, you know inset will not work and uh, loops will not work either so slide edge is just a fantastic tool not a really useful trick i can give you is for outsetting or offsetting edges so let's say that I have um, a shape here and I'm going to subdivide it. And if I'm going to, you know, press I, and by the way, if it doesn't work for you to insert, press I and B, because if you enable B, it will not offset from any of these edges. So press B. If I'm going to offset this, all the edges are offsetting evenly. You see that, right? You know, it's all, everything is even and uh, the perfect quads. Now, when I'm going to remove this part here, right? And I'm going to try to insert this one. We're going to have a bit of a boo-boo, right? So you see that now these edges are kind of uh, pushing these quads in. So we're losing this perfect quad topology and perfect kind of a distribution of, of, of the size of quads here. So if I, you know, if I curve this, it could be a problem. So what you may want to do instead, you may want to outset or offset this uh, edge outside, right? So let's grab this edge here. And we're going to go to right click and go to mesh tools. You need to enable edit mesh tools add on in Blender, which is we comes with Blender and click on offset edges and then adjust the offset here with a shift 
and switch from offset to extrude. And this will extrude the loop outside. So it's kind of like an inset, but it's you know working outside. And you see we don't lose any of the shape of these quads here. And we get this beautiful loop running around our shape. So this is a really powerful tool. And I recommend you use it as well. Another two fantastic add-ons is going to be loop tools from Blender and um, specifically space and relax uh, features, also circle. And then you have edge flow add-on. So this one is really crazy too. Let's say you got a cut in here like this with a bevel. And I'm going to apply this. And the bevel here is a bit messed up. So, you know, it's kind of just really fucked up, okay? And you want to fix that well there's a way of fixing it you can select these edges in the middle of the bevel so between the supporting edges select them and right click and go to set flow and boom right not a really fantastic tool like i said it's gonna be um space so let's say that you have these edges moved like this but you want to fix the spacing between them you can select these and go to loop tools and click on space and they should actually fix it as well so that's you know one of ways of um, fixing topo uh, if you have kind of like a wobbly topo or kind of a jaggedy topo like this you know something like that and you want to a bit relax it you know a tad what you can do is right click and go to uh, relax and the more times you're gonna click that you can also assign a shortcut key the more relaxed this loops gonna be right kind of like averages out all these points if i'm going to select all of them it's going to work on all of them okay now if you want to put a straight line here you can go to uh go to edge then to set flow and linear you can do that um you can also fix the spacing between them as well right like this so you're gonna have even space between these points uh, you could also fix the flow if you wanted to it's gonna create actually bevel in here so there's a lot of different um, you know moves that these add-ons offer that can help you um, to deal with very tricky situation on your geometry the last trick i want to show you is going to be with bevels so this is actually quite fantastic okay let's say that you have i'm going to show you this in a circle because it's actually a good example let's say that you're going to have a circle cut here in the middle uh, like this okay and when i apply this bevel I'm randomly going to assign some two edges to support any boolean okay any boolean in blender needs two supporting edges and blender has this bad habit of placing these edges in the most retarded angles now the most um, efficient um, solution for running an edge to a boolean is going to be at 90 degrees so if um, the bevel, uh, if the edge runs here around, you know, if I drew an imaginary edge here with a tangent point here on the circle, this would be a 90 degree angle, right? So, um, you know, this is not optimal, but this would be optimal. Do you see what I mean? And I'll show you why, because if I'm going to run a bevel here, uh, you see what happens to my loop. This one goes nice and straight. But this one gets fucked up now if this is your problem and you cannot move this edge or you just you know i don't know if you you just can't be bothered moving it what you can do is open the bevel menu and deselect loop slide which will push this edge outside so now it doesn't matter what kind of edge angle you have this edge is going to get pushed and moved now be careful because you have other topology here this is going to move through the topology so you know just be be careful yeah there are many 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 other tools that i could talk about and i could talk about you know for hours like for example another fantastic tool that you really need to start using is in the free add-on called uh, machine tools let's say that uh and i use this tool all the time let's say that i have this situation here that we have some kind of a cut uh, or whatever and um i have topology here running around like this okay so i get this you know edges running like this on this mesh and it's all you know all a little bit fucked up okay so let me just apply this and i wanted to you know straighten these out so let's say i wanted to make this edge straight so i wanted to align this all these verts to this vert you can select all these verts you can shift select this one and alt a with machine tools and align it with a line point to the bottom you can do the same thing in here you know align it to the top 
and then you can have also merge tool so you can select one word second word and press one or select two words and press shift one to merge them in the middle these are very quick tools the same with cleanup tool okay if you have some words that are you know um basically non-manifold if you press three with machine tools you're gonna clean any non-manifold topology the same thing you can do with hard ups if you're gonna see this kind of a mess and you don't need that uh, hard ups will remove any unnecessary mesh that's not contributing to holding the shape or shading so these are tools i'm using all the time but like i said there's a, there are many more of them so you know i could just talk three hours in here it probably wouldn't list all of them but these are like the ones that i'm using probably 99 percent of the time uh, another one is going to be a mirror from mesh machine so if i press alt x um, it's just instant mirror based on view and it's extremely fast and allows me to uh, you know work so quickly with subdivision because whatever i do on this side right if i'm gonna run these cards so let's say i'm gonna press k with a knife c to cut through click a to cut a straight line and i'm gonna connect these two points they're gonna cut through the mesh right but if i wanted to mirror everything to the other side all i have to do is mesh machine is alt text and i have no symmetrical mesh with all these loops on the other side and i have quads everywhere not except for here right but um you get my point so these tools are extremely fast and if you're working on subdivision or anything in blender without add-ons and without proper tools you're literally uh, shooting yourself in the foot and wasting a ton of time if you want to become a professional eventually you need to start learning how to utilize and leverage any and all tools at your disposal it doesn't matter if it's ai add-ons or your mom okay you just have to use them so you know you cannot just fuck around and waste your time because it's going to be always someone else who's going to be more efficient than you and he's going to get picked because it's faster and again more efficient so it costs less money all right guys well that's it for this one i hope this video is going to help you out uh, there's quite a lot of tips in here and all kinds of different tools uh, watch it again if you need to there's quite a lot of add-ons being mentioned but uh it shouldn't set you back more than you know i don't know 100 bucks or something um, for all the add-ons i've mentioned so 100 bucks is actually nothing comparing to the time you're gonna be saving so don't be that guy who doesn't want to spend money on add-ons and sits there like a fucking muppet wasting thousands of hours you know on fucking vert sliding because they just be on retarded thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one